Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be building the Tyro $99 race drone and every man and his dog has done a build video on this but you know I've been doing these for quite a while. I think I can do it in 10 minutes so that's going to be my thing so let's get on to it. The first thing you're going to need to do is put the heat shrink over the arms. You cannot do this at any other point so do it now. You're also going to want to order all of the screws because they come in a single bag in terms of length so this is the bottom plate and we've got the longest screw going through there which is a 16 mil screw they're all m3 and then you've got this little nut here that's going to go on the top i'm using a 2m hex driver to tighten that up we don't want to tighten it up fully though because we want a little bit of movement so we can move stuff about so this next screw is the 12 millimeter screw and that is going to go into the press nut. Do not tighten them up yet until you've got them all in, but now I'm tightening everything up just so you can move them around a little bit because it can be quite tricky to slot everything in. So these are the six millimeter screws and we've got three of those that go into the carbon and also this aluminium there as well. And then we've got a separate bag of screws for the camera to screw into and those use a Phillips screwdriver so look out for those and then these are four millimeter screws to go into the braces although I do take these apart later because the cable ties don't fit around them and then this one here is a 12 millimeter screw and that's for the SMA adapter so onto the motors I'm feeding the wires through here and then I'm going to use the eight millimeter screws to screw those in so just three of those there I have made a mistake though the motors are directional and I didn't realize that so we've got different colored nuts there and as you can see they are not correct and I need to swap two of the motors around it doesn't really matter because they're locking nuts but try tell my OCD that so randomly throughout this video they will just get corrected in fact I've got a screenshot here just so you can see the correct orientation of the motors but as I say it doesn't really matter because they are locking nuts it's just my OCD so now I am tinning up for the XT60 connector for the stack I'm actually tinning it up underneath and I'm also adding my own solder to the XT60 connector as well. The reason I'm soldering it in underneath is I don't want it to get in the way of that low ESR capacitor that they've installed. So when you pull the battery wire down, it will move it. I'm also bridging the S bus pad there for the invert. And now I am using the 14 millimeter screws that goes into the nylon and we have got four of those. So don't screw those too tight because it's going into nylon. So we don't want to you know, cross thread anything there but that has screwed in now I'm taking the top off the flight controller because the stack comes like this built but we're going to want to solder the motor wires in place and with them not being silicon I don't want to cut them up because they will just burn so what I'm going to do here is now just tin up all of the ESC pads and I'm going to try my best to solder them direct and then I'm tinning up all of the motor wires while being very careful because it's not silicon they can burn so another reason I don't want to cut them and you can see I'm bending them around the stack there and you can get away with that without cutting them at all so I've done that for all of them there and everything's soldered in so the flight controller can now go back on the top pay attention to the arrow and I'm putting the screws back on just using a socket set here just to tighten everything up now I'm plugging in the wire from the ESC to the flight controller it's just a single wire it is very simple this build compared to complicated builds and then this is the wire for the VTX plugging in this is the wire for the camera it's all plug and play so it's a kind of a cheat really and then at the back we have got the receiver so now I'm going to flash my receiver I'm using an XM plus here I use these little wire grips and then on the back of the Tyrannus we've got the signal and the ground and then the VBAT and then I'm going to go into the firmware folder I've downloaded this off the FreeSky website I'm using the XM with the RSSI on channel 8 I'm going to flash the external module and you'll see that will start to write I imagine a lot of people are going to be using FlySky 
with this but it works perfect with this so I'm writing that there and I've also found a way to bind these receivers so if you change the external RF to on to PPM and then press the button down so it turns it on we can also bind the receiver at this point no messing about once it's on the copter there so press exit there and I'm now bound to this receiver can turn that off so when I turn it back on, we'll get a green light and you can see bound without messing about at all. I really like this feature. So now I'm going to set a model up. I've called it the TY99. We're going to the mix and what I'm going to do is on channel 5, I'm going to put A for arm and then I'm going to select my two position switch for the arming there and then just exit out of that. And then for channel 6, this one's going to be M and I call it M for mode, so angle mode and acro and then I'm going to choose a three position switch there, you can see you move the switch, it selects it automatically, so I'm going to press exit out there, I'm going to do a third one for buzzer, now this model doesn't come with a buzzer, so B for buzzer, but we can use D-shot commands to make the beacon noise, so I'm just going to choose another switch up there and just move it and then that is my buzzer ready to set up for Beatfly and exit out of that and that is the most simple setup I think for the Tyrannus we can turn that off so I'm actually going to use these 90 degree pins here so that I don't have to do any soldering I mean you could solder the XM Plus Direct and just cutting off the excess pins there as well but I really like the plug and play thing so I have got some heat shrink, it's my own heat shrink, for some reason they stopped giving heat shrink with the XM Plus FreeSky what you're doing, but you can see there, just going to plug straight in there, so I really like that. Then I have got some 3M sticky pads there, and I'm going to place that in the flight control on the top of the flight control a bit. Now I'm removing the screws here because I'm trying to fit the VTX, you get given these cable ties here and my idea was to cable tie the VTX down the problem is and NJ Tech figured this out if you're not subscribed to NJ Tech then please do so I'm putting the SMA connector in here as well and I was trying to create the pod you know put it all together so cut the cable tie off and yeah the screws were just getting in the way by the way I'm plugging the camera in there as well this is the stock camera I'm gonna try and make the best of it that's the VTX getting plugged in just moving my receiver to the other side so that there is plenty of space when everything goes together I'm actually feeding through the antennas one each side as well and then I'm using the six millimeter screws to screw in these aluminium parts but I kinda have to redo it and this could have been like an eight minute video if I hadn't have done this but it's all a little bit trial and error so that's the two screws going in the back there and I thought I'd be clever and sort of try and make it all come together at once and it kinda worked the only problem is that there's not enough room for the VTX so I'm putting in these 4mm screws here that you're giving, so the really short ones and I almost got all of the screws in and then this last screw would not go in and that is because like I say it's recessed so what I decided to do is the same as NJ I got a pair of cutters and cut away the cable tie and then put a layer of foam that then lifted the VTX above the screws and Bob's your uncle there was no problems but yeah they don't detail that in the instructions so you know be careful with that but there are things that you're going to need anyways you know such as a soldering iron and all these sorts of tools but yeah plug in back the VTX in and now that is fit and flush so now I'm doing a continuity test this is actually a meter that Banggood sent me quite a cheap one we get a little chirp straight away as the capacitors charge up but if you get a constant beep then you've got a short but we're fine here so this is one of the last stages so I'm just using a candle lighter here to heat up the heat shrink and I could have done a better job really and then I'm using my own cable ties here this is for the antenna to go on I've also copied NJ Tech <laughs> for this I'll link to his video in the below because actually he went into greater detail I think his video is an hour putting on the pagoda antenna that's very important to do before you turn it on and then I am putting on the by blades there in the right direction and I'm using a socket set there to tighten those up the last thing to do 
is to put the battery strap through. Not too keen on the battery sitting on the screws, but there is the build finished.